Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. Shortly before Jesus would leave his disciples in John chapter 14, we read these words which he spoke. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The entire group comes to sing, My home, sweet home. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions, and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, Hebrews chapter 11. How was it possible for God to take Enoch to heaven without dying? Among those who are listed in Hebrews chapter 11, what we call the hall of faith, where so many Old Testament men and women are described as living their lives by faith. We have, as one of the very first key examples, the man Enoch, who, it says, by faith Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up, for he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God, pleasing to God. We go back all the way to Genesis chapter 5 and verses 21 to 24. Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters. 
So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Then again, it is repeated. Enoch walked with God. What a beautiful picture that is of daily communion, of conversation, of interaction, of intimacy with God. He walked constantly with God, and he was not, for God took him. He was taken out of this world, not by way of undertaker, as with all of the others who are listed in the lengthy genealogy of Genesis chapter 5, where it says, and he died, and he died, and he died repeatedly. Enoch, not by way of undertaker, but rather by way of upper taker, God simply took Enoch. It's not that he vanished and they could not find him. People understood that God had taken Enoch. Well, how was it possible? Hebrews tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. We find Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 speaks of the things in the Old Testament, things which were written, they were recorded for our instruction as examples that we, upon whom the end of the age has come, that we might learn from these things. And one thing that the Apostle Paul was anticipating, even in his own lifetime, was the rapture, the catching away of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, out of this world. Here, deep in the Old Testament, we have something whereby it prefigures the rapture of the church. We're caught away to be with Christ, that we, pleasing to him, not based upon our own works of righteousness, but simply because of the Savior who loved us, who gave himself for us, and our delight in him. Of course, Elijah is the other great Old Testament figure, who was taken by a whirlwind to heaven. And that is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 11. So we have these two Old Testament individuals who robbed the grave. There is no grave marker for either of these great men of the Old Testament. They were taken to glory another way and so it shall be for some of us even who are living today that we will be taken and there will be no burial place for us. We will be caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and glad day, glad day that will be. Question number two, who is the man of lawlessness mentioned in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Here we need to read the entire chapter because what we find in verse 3, let no one in any way deceive you for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Now the questioner of uh, this, this questioner puts it that in John chapter 17 and verse 12, there is a direct reference to Judas, the one doomed to destruction, that that was a clear identification. However, what the apostle Paul gives us here is quite different. This is not the one doomed to destruction in the person of Judas. Here is a mystery. And it is not Satan, because as you continue to read in the ch same chapter, and verse 9 especially, it refers to Satan as a separate individual. Here we have a person demonic in character who rises to a position of authority, arrogant, proud, self-centered in the most, in the most uh, ultimate, utter way. For, it says in verse 4, 
this person opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God, as being God. And Paul says, look, when I was still with you, you remember me talking to you about these things. You remember that I was laying it out before you. Remember what I said and hold on to that and be not deceived. And so here we have an individual that is unnamed, unidentified, but yet to come. We also have in verse 7 that the mystery of lawlessness, the mystery of rebellion, and the mystery of absolutely spitting in God's face, it is already at work, but it is yet to come that it is focused so specifically in one world leader who will yet come upon the scene and who will position themselves as God himself and seek the worship of the entire world. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Rick Bowring now comes to sing Nearing the Shore, and that is followed up by the full group who comes once again to sing When the Roll is Called Up Yonder.
We repeatedly hear from you by letter, by phone, by email and other communication, how much you enjoy Faith to Live By's music. And once again, we have prepared a CD of 14 songs entitled, A Closer Walk. Solos, duets, trios, the male quartet, as well as the entire group singing two selections. I know that this will be a blessing to you. All of our resources of books and CDs are sent free and postage paid with no obligation whatsoever. When you contact us, we reply and that's the end of it. And so ask for your copy, which will be sent free and postage paid of this new CD, A Closer Walk, this week when you write to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6 or give us a call on our toll-free phone number 1-833-367-3852, as well our website faithtoliveby.ca has a means of you being in touch with us and making your request known for this new CD, A Closer Walk. Now a selection from the CD, A Closer Walk, here is Heidi, Dorothy, and Lois to sing, I Then Shall Live.
For many weeks we've been making our way through Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus, and we come today to the second last study which we will pursue in this epistle. It's in the middle of chapter 6, and it's an exciting passage talking about the armor of God. Surely we will come back and we will take many weeks to make our way through the various pieces of armament that Paul speaks about for the believer to take up. But very quickly, let us make our way through what Paul has to say here. We begin in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Paul is speaking to believers and there is difficulty in the first century world to be a follower of Jesus Christ. The people, they were shut out of other privileges and other opportunities. And Paul is saying, rather than hang your head, rather than think that you are hard done by, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of whose might, not your own. Do not think that you drum it up from within you or that you take it from another person. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. When you are feeling weak, when you are feeling down, when you feel that you need to look up to see the bottom, or you, you need to find strength, come to the Lord and find it there. And Paul says, now there is armor. This is not physical armor, but Paul describes it as physical armor. It is something that is spiritual and something that we can take at any time of the day. Paul says, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes, against the wiles, against the devices, against all the tricks that the devil would want to throw at you. And Paul plainly says, for the struggle, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, he says once again, take up what God has provided for your defense and for your moving forward. Take up the full armor of God. It's the, what God has for us. Take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm, not to give ground, not to be pushed into a corner, but to stand your ground as a believer in Jesus Christ. And he says, stand firm, therefore, dear brother, dear sister, having gird your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. There's something for every part of us. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, the shield of faith which, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Have you ever felt that the devil has you, in, uh, that you are the devil's target and he's sending flaming arrows? Hold up the shield of faith that you might be able to extinguish those. And take the helmet, you need a helmet, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Each of these things, they are given. And notice that there's nothing for the defense of our back. For the Lord would not have us turn and flee in retreat. Rather, even as the Apostle Paul says, stand firm, stand and hold your ground with the armament with the preparation that God has provided to you. Do you know these things, dear friend? The apostle Paul did, and he wanted the believers in Ephesus to know them. And he would want us also, 2,000 some years ago nearly, to know them as well. They are just as powerful today. The devices, the schemes, the tricks, the, the, the 
plans of the devil, they are just as real. And so we need what God has provided. If you don't know Christ, come to know him by coming to the cross in repentance and in faith today, pleading his blood. And then, just as Paul says, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand and continue to stand, dear friend. And may God's strength pour into you and may you know of his abundant blessing today and every day. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.